like to welcome everyone to the February 16th meeting of the Mobile Planning Commission. I'd like to take a moment to review our general operating procedures. Our meeting is divided into two sessions, the public hearing session and the deliberation session. In the public hearing session, an application or group application on the agenda is called. The applicant makes his or her presentation. Commission members ask questions, if any. Members of the public make their comments. Only four people may speak for an agenda item uh, slash project and four against. Each speaker is limited to five minutes, subject to questions by the commission. After four minutes, a loud beep will indicate one minute left to speak. And at this point, please summarize your comments. After all opposition speakers have finished, the applicant will be given time to respond. If you do intend to speak, please come to the podium, speak into the microphone, and give your name and address for our minutes. Please direct all comments to the commission only and not to the applicant or the audience. And please remember to speak directly into the microphone. On routine applications, the applicant may simply raise his or her hand if there are no objections to the staff recommendations. I will then announce that the applicant is in full agreement with those recommendations. If there are any questions, the applicant will be given that opportunity to respond. After hearing all applications, the commission will go into deliberation session. In the deliberation session, the commissioners discuss each application with input from the staff as necessary, but with no input from the audience. The commissioners then vote on each, each application, and results of the voting can be learned from the planning department at 205-5895. If some issues arise in the deliberation session that were not addressed in the public hearing, the chairman has the discretion either to allow additional comments pertaining to those issues in order to resolve them or call for the application to be held over for discussion at a future meeting. Occasionally, one or more commission members may recuse themselves from discussing and voting on a given application. A recusal does not necessarily mean the member is directly involved with the application or the applicant. Depending upon the circumstances, ethical rules may require a recusal when there is only the slightest appearance of a conflict of interest. If a regular member recuses, a supernumerary will vote in their stead, unless both supernumeraries are already voting due to absences. The Planning Commission makes final decisions subject to appeal on subdivisions, planning approvals, planned unit developments. The Planning Commission makes only recommendations on zoning applications with the City Council making final decisions. Please turn off all your cell phones. Uh, commissioners and staff, please remember to turn on your microphones when speaking. We will call roll. Uh, Jay Stubbs, uh, Alan Cameron here, Jennifer Denson, Carlos Gant, Shirley Sessions, here. Taylor Atchison, Matt Anderson, Nick Amberger, Scott Jones, Susan Carley, Kirk Matei. We have a forum. We will begin. First item on the agenda is to Drury Lane. Is um, the applicant present? Are you in agreement with all the conditions? Is anyone here to speak for item number one? Speak against? Okay. We'll move on to item number two. Number two is twenty three fifty one Venetia Road. Item number two is recommended for tentative approval, subject to nine conditions. Is the applicant present? You good with all? 
Okay, is anyone here to speak for? Is anyone here to speak against? Okay, item number three. Three thousand eleven Demetropolis Road is recommended for tentative approval, subject to seven conditions. Is the applicant present? Clarify a few things. Oh, sorry. Um, in regards to, do y'all have this in front of you? Uh, just in regards to the subdivision itself, um, in regards to zoning, uh, this is single family residential. The division is not going to change that zoning. Uh, so I just want to, you know, put it put at ease that that issue. Also, there's a mention of a, a trailer park in which mobile homes are not allowed in the city. Uh, zoning does protect that without a, a variance. Um, in terms of rental properties, uh, I think everyone has a right to to rent properties. I don't think anyone can stop that, the city nor anyone. So just trying to put their, you know, some of these concerns addressed. Uh, we're, we're asking that the staff, or excuse me, that the Planning Commission approve for the staff recommendations. I just wanted to clarify those, those few items that were mentioned in the email provided. Any questions by commissioners? Thank you, Mr. Norrell. Is anyone here, anyone else here to speak for? Anyone to speak against? Okay, we'll move on to item number four. Seventy-two fifty-nine Wingate Way. Staff recommends approval, subject to 11 conditions. Is the applicant present? Is the applicant present? I'm sorry. Uh, is the applicant present? Okay. Is there anyone here to speak for? Is there anyone here to speak against? Good afternoon. My name is Renee Boys Murdo. I live at 7248 Wingate Way, on the corner of Wingate Way and Wingate Court. And I am not opposed to the expansion. What I am opposed to is the opening of Wingate Way to connect with Wijian, and I know I'm mispronouncing that. Right now, we have a lot of vehicles that come into our subdivision. I see them constantly. They are speeding. There are small children in our subdivision in our area. And if you open that up where it goes through, it's almost like a freeway right now. And it will become a straightaway, and it will become a dog leg that goes through that portion of the subdivision. And I don't, we don't have any speed limit signs, and I don't think they would pay any attention to them anyway. So I am opposed to that being opened onto Widgeon Way and from Wingate. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, my understanding is that that is going to be a cul de sac and it's not going to adjoin and, and cut through. Is that correct? It's not going to cut through. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Is anyone else here to speak against 7259 Wingate Way? Mr. Chairman, if I may, I just need to bring to the attention of the commission you have uh, at your places a comment uh, submitted online as well as some emails voicing concerns regarding this application. 
question for staff. It looks like most of these concerns were the same as the uh, lady that just spoke about the connection and the traffic, but maybe these comments were for seeing the actual subdivision design that doesn't show any sort of connection. That is correct. Uh, when notices are sent out, the site plan that you have is not included. Right. So all they have is the text of what you see on the agenda. But yes, as illustrated on the site plan, it simply continues the street and terminates in a cul-de-sac. There is no connection. Thank you. And just as a statement on this, I, this is in my district. I did receive a lot of emails and phone calls from both neighborhoods. And the other one is actually in the county, not even in the city. But once this came out, the plaque came out and it showed as a cul-de-sac, then everybody was okay with it from both neighborhoods. They had no issue. So I think that resolved all the issues that I heard. Any more questions or comments from commissioners? Move on to number five. The northeast corner of Halls Mill Road and River Duchesne. This application is recommended for approval with two conditions. Uh, is the applicant present? Well, Mr. Bird. Jerry Bird for the applicant, 26, uh, Bird Survey and 2609 Halls Mill Road. <clears throat> I know there were comments posted online. Staff has received them and forwarded them to me. I will address those as soon as I get this stuff shuffled around. Right. Uh, there were nine comments. <clears throat> I'm going to hold on the Sheldon Way, the last, but two of the comments were from residents that had addresses on Riviera Duchesne Sheen Road, further uh, southeast. There was one, no specific address, alluded to our neighborhoods in Riviera Duchesne, so I presume she lives down that way. <laughs> two on Lloyd Station Road area, and then there were three comments with no addresses. So I, I, I don't know if they were just ride-bys and they decided they didn't like it. The Sheldon Way uh, letter, it was written on uh, February 10th, last Thursday, and it had five names Looks like one couple and then three individuals. They all have different names and four addresses. So I suppose all in the same family. <clears throat> After that was written, one of the name of the couple, that man and the owner met at Ben Reynolds' office, discussed this, and hashed out an agreement that uh, Ben Reynolds sent me, text to me, and I printed it, and it looked like this. <clears throat> Part of what they agreed was keeping enough concrete up here by the building that would satisfy the fire department. They pull in, they want to turn their truck around on concrete, not on aggregate. But the balance of this would be whatever the lay down yard storage area would be, <clears throat> would be aggregate. There's going to be a retention pond, detention pond along this side. They agreed to a eight foot screen fencing along the east side of the detention pond. There's a ditch over here. Certainly wouldn't want to put the fence in the ditch. They had talked about bringing the zoning down to B5, if possible, from I-1 to B5. But the business that proposed to go in there, I think staff sent in a, a note that it has to be I-1. So that is kind of off the table. This is signatures by Mr. McClaney, I think and then the owner, Tyler Pitts. 
where they agreed to what I'm saying. The owner, Mr. Pitts, also agreed that on Sheldon Way, which is where there's residents on one side, commercial on the other side, that he would plant, go ahead and plant crepe myrtles along there for screening. Um, he's not developing that at present, but he's agreed to do that to help that situation. Um, I think the resident also agreed that sidewalk on Riviera Duchesne Road was really, it would serve no purpose because there's a ditch there that it would run into. We'd like to ask for a waiver of the sidewalk on Riviera Duchesne if we can. Um, I think that addresses what the meeting was about. Uh, I think Ben Reynolds sent to Scott Jones the items. I don't know if I missed one or not. Okay. As I recall, that was it. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I have a copy of it. Uh, I have five items on here. Okay. And I want to go through them and clarify just so that everyone's uh, clearly on the commission clearly understands. The applications recommended for approval, it is for I-1, B-5, does not allow the proposed use. Uh, what is the proposed use? It includes pipe storage, which requires I-1 and I-2. Uh, the two conditions already associated would be included based on the agreement. The applicant is voluntarily including the condition of an eight-foot privacy fence along the east property line. <clears throat> I'm going to clarify that the storage yard is gravel because all parking in I-1 has to be a, a hard surface as well as fire code area. Next condition is that the landscaping be limited to the right of way along Halls Mill Road and Le Riviera Duchesne it will still have to be compliant. They're simply providing it all along those two street frontages and that access to the site is limited to Halls Mill Road. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. We will not be adding to congestion on Riviera Street. Um, I would like to ask the privacy fence, we would like that to be chain link with the that black screen fabric on it as opposed to a wooden privacy fence which does in fact blow down deteriorate over time um, if that's possible from the staff's perspective the zoning ordinance requires no buffering between i1 and b3 <laughs> if this were proposed to comply with zoning ordinance requiring required buffering it would not be acceptable if this is what was agreed upon between the parties since it's above and beyond what the zoning ordinance requires yeah. it could be stipulated but i have no knowledge if that was agreed upon well the resident that was in in the meeting I, I'm told, was concerned about the visual going out toward Hall's Mill, and the owner agreed to build the screen fence. And uh, asking for the chain link would double as a security fence as well. I mean, 
this wouldn't, wouldn't the privacy through, fence goes through. Uh, I mean, I'm you sorry. can knock it down. I'm sorry. Go ahead and finish. I, I, I thought I, you were. I, I, yeah, okay. <laughs> this has got to come before the city council anyway for final approval, correct? All right. I, this was not discussed in detail. So I would say let's take it. I, I think we're close enough that that gets us to the premise of the discussion that I heard. Yeah. And if there's any other discussions, we can handle that between when we get through the planning commission and when it becomes before the city council meeting would be my recommendation. If the condition just states eight foot fence along east property line, then when it gets to council, y'all can correct see that. That, that. that would be my recommendation. That would be legally sufficient. Okay. The residence down Riviera to Sheen Road, a little bit larger drawing than the one you have. They were concerned. They're concerned about the entrance being industrial, commercial, right at Halls Mill Road. This is the site. All of the blue is I-1. We're asking for 220 feet to be zoned I-1. There's already 800 feet, or really in excess if you count that corner, but 800 from that point to the interstate, that is zoned I-1 already. So that's not really a, I wouldn't think it would be a fair discussion to say we will hurt the entrance into this area. We don't know what will go over on this side. And this is I-10, and oops, there'd be three already on that side. I was thinking that would be an excellent buffer, the I-10 being the buffer of residential once you cross it and commercial out toward Halls Mill Road. That, um, I think that's about all I, I can add to rebutting the, the concerns of the neighbors. Any questions by commissioners? Thank you, Mr. Bird. Is anyone here to speak against northeast corner of Halls Mill and River Duchesne? Okay. Move on to number six, 1000 Bay Bridge Road. This is a new sidewalk waiver application. Staff has recommended it for approval. Is the applicant present? in agreement with all conditions. Is anyone here to speak for? Anyone here to speak against? Come down to the podium, please, sir. And that'll work. Can you all hear me? Yes, sir. I'm a retired Marine Major Joe Womack, Africatown native. And um, address 2816 Westmore Court. And in the words of uh, former President Reagan, here we go again. You know, it was less than two years ago when another trucking company came before you all with almost with, with the same request to, to wave the sidewalk. And uh, right, right in that same area, and you all denied that request. I, re I ask that you deny it again because at that particular time, the mayor of Mobile had just said he wanted Mobile to be a walking community. And I don't think he's changed his mind. And, in, and if you look at the, um, the uh, Africa Town plan that was paid for by the city of Mobile, $50,000, it says, that's what the residents want, a walking community. Not only a walking community, but we also have uh, picked out spaces for a blue way, which in partnership with the National Park Service is a walking trail on the water. And I was, I was uh, as you all may know, the Africatown story, which is a big history, a uh, big, big part of the history of the city of Mobile, you know, is getting worldwide attention. And we're trying to our best to, uh, to make the community representative of what it should be because tourists are already coming here. 
Uh, we've got bus loads coming down this summer for the opening of the uh, the Heritage House. As you know, the Welcome Center was approved for three and a half million dollars. The Heritage House will be north of two million dollars. It's going to house artifacts coming up from the Clotilda, which was found in 2019. And uh, the credit union was just purchased by the city, and the renovation of that is going to be over a million dollars. So a lot of good things are happening to the community. And we want the community to be a walking community. When it, this past weekend, I had the opportunity to show someone down from, from Washington, D.C. to see our uh, field of descendants play that they enjoy very much. And we drove from downtown where they were staying down first Conception Street, which is just two miles as the crow flies straight down. And I said, this is an opportunity. You have wetlands, and that's the area we're talking about right there, and, and wetlands to, to, so people can, it, it's a perfect place for walking and, and riding and hiking and biking and all those different things straight from downtown Mobile. And, and so, so we'll, we'll ask that the people in the business community to be good stewards of the community and, and adhere to what the demands, not the demands, I'm sorry, but what requests and what we're trying to do in Africa Town, and that is uh, make it uh, suitable for everybody in the community and, and those that are going to be coming in, in the future. I have on a shirt that was, that was given to us from Sundance, the Sundance Festival, in which that documentary won the documentary uh, uh, award, numerous awards. It was picked up by Netflix. They purchased the right, right and they're going to be streaming it later on this year on Netflix channel and the Disney channel. And they're going to make it into a miniseries. The Barack Obama, President Barack Obama and Michelle Obama uh, production company, Higher Ground, purchased the right to make it into a movie. They've already hired the producers and the directors, and they're going to work on it. And this play that, that those of you may have gotten out to see uh, uh, this weekend is, 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 is their plan is to eventually go to Broadway. And if they get some financing, they'll, they'll do that because it's a very, very good play. And I suggest that if you go see it, you bring your handkerchief with it because you, you'll cry several times throughout the scene. And so, so we're asking that, that, uh, that the business community work with us as we make the community uh, accessible and, and, and entertaining for the tourists that are already coming in and, and, and deny them the, the waiver on this sidewalk and, and, and have them do what they should be doing with the mayor request to make this thing a walking community for, for everybody. And, and just spend a little bit of extra money to, uh, to put in the sidewalk. Um, if, if you don't have it, just apply for a grant in the African town community. You probably get the money from the government or from, from some funds, some uh, funders to put in the sidewalk. But uh, we request that uh, you deny their waiver and, uh, and, 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 and let's do what the mayor asks. Let's do what the citizens and residents of Africa town ask. And let's have a walking community throughout the entire city, including Africa town. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions by commissioners? Um, I, I do have one question. Do we know if any of the other parcels around there have sidewalks? Is this something that is, is not there? We went by there as early uh, or as most recently as this morning. There is a portion of sidewalk in front of this church. Uh, there is, as you walk under the I-165 overpass, there are sidewalks on either side, and then th there are no other sidewalks in the area. We looked for evidence of walking paths, especially, uh, you know, along this property and especially where those sidewalks terminated in front of, you know, the portion in front of the church here and where the sidewalks terminate here. There is no evidence of, of walking that has occurred in, in the area. Was there one on the north side of the interstate leading into Africa Town? The, the sidewalks along New Bay Bridge Road end at this off ramp and on ramp. There's nothing. Nothing on the north side. There's nothing this way. No, across the interstate. They all go towards are, the are river. Walk from that side. Yes. Okay. Yes. 
what what's your proximity from this location to where the Africa Africa Town Museum is going to be? Do we know? The museum is roughly okay. Here's the site. The museum's roughly over here. Uh, the I'm sorry, the Welcome Center. The uh, museum is up in here on the north side. Yeah, it's off the map. Scott, if you look at on that map, you see the, the property, the city line right there between Mobile and Pritchard yeah. is right there. So this is on the eastern, I mean westernmost part of, of the city and everything that the gentleman spoke of is in the more on the east side, north east side. And last question I have is this came before the planning commission before and was denied that's correct what was the reason for the denial at that point the the planning commission is typically very supportive of sidewalks being constructed okay all right and <laughs> lastly i would say i almost wanted to stand up and put you're a major general which of us you can promote me a major oh. major Major. Oh, four. Well, that's okay. Thank you for your service. Appreciate that. Thank you. Can I have to say, just to answer his question, Africa Town has several communities. You have spoke about the museum. That's in Plateau. Several, I'm sorry, several neighborhoods. It used to have 12, but when you ran the interstates through and and and, uh, and put up industries, you you cut it down to about four or five now. Um, that area. There used to be housing in there. It was called the stockyard. It was called the stockyard because also in that area, those of you that are older than me may remember the Hayes Davis packing, meat packing company. It was right there in that area. It smelled worse than international paper, but that's another story. And and, and that area was the stockyard, and, and those people were moved out when the, when the highway, the 165, came through. And uh, and and then the lumber company that expanded their, park, their, their parking over to that area. But that's that's one of the things why we need these sidewalks so we can get back to one community, even though we have highways and byways that are divided us, it'll get us back to a walking community so we can walk between, you know, cousins and neighbors like we used to years ago. But yeah, that, that used to be used to have sidewalks, but uh but uh when they moved out uh the stockyard community as neighborhood as we called it, uh they tore all that down. Uh, is there anyone else here to speak against? Would the applicant like to respond? Tommy Latham, 3901 Spring Hill Avenue. I work for Clark Gear Latham and Associates uh, here on behalf of Gulf Coast Truck. Uh, we agree with the staff in its entirety. We have been out there. Uh, it's a heavy industrial area. There are log trucks. It's just not conducive, in my opinion, for sidewalks and trying to get the connectivity that Mobile's trying to get. We're all for sidewalks, but this is not the right application. In addition to that, there's a new, uh, I don't want to say a development, but it's really upgrading residential houses across from the church, which is across from the site. And those, it's actually a, a very nice project that they're upgrading, but they didn't put any sidewalks in. And you would think that that would be one of the things that we should have had to do with from the residential houses to go up to Conception Street then over to Bay Bridge Road. Uh, Conception Street from Bay Bridge Road all the way to, to I-165 is industrial, and then is Morris Wetland. Uh, New Bay Bridge Road, I, I rode there today. There are no sidewalks going, I would say, to the, to the south. And until you get to the interstate, like Margaret said, there, there's not any sidewalk. So again, we're in agreement with the staff. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Latham. 
Any comments or questions by commissioners? I would only say um, my only comment would be I, I deal in industrial real estate and I spend some time in that part of the world. And the, I have noticed that the church you mentioned, Margaret, has sidewalks, but it, when I looked at them, they looked as if the church put them there to serve the congregation from the parking lot. There's a sidewalk along the Conception Street Road frontage in front of the church. It's not in great shape, but it is there. I was there this morning. Um, they do have, I don't recall any internal sidewalks for the church, but there was a strip of sidewalk along their, their lot frontage on Conception Street Road. But there, like I said earlier, there was no evidence on either side of it, of it having any degree of use. Granted, it's winter, but there was no, you know, right. trampled down path. Okay. Okay, if there are no more questions or comments, we'll move on to number seven. Number seven is... 3015 and 3019 Pleasant Valley Road. Application, it's a group application for subdivision and zoning amendment. Each are recommended for approval by the staff. The present zoning is R1. They're applying for a rezoning to R3 multifamily. Is the applicant pre present? Is the applicant in agreement? Is there anyone here to speak for item number seven? Please. Good afternoon. My name is Thomas Ward. I'm from uh, 704 Saddlebrook Drive, Killen, Alabama. And I'm working with Mr. Clarence Ball of Ball Healthcare and to help develop these. Uh, senior apartments, and these will be for uh, 55 years and older, and they will be affordable. The rents will be around $500 for a one, six to seven for a two. We will be using um, some money, hopefully, from the city of Mobile, as well as uh, uh, re uh, residential bonds from the state of Alabama. Uh, this, this project will take approximately 18 months once we get uh, the funding uh, to finish. Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, uh, the total development cost is almost $200,000 a unit. Is there any questions? I have one question. Sure. Is, is this multifamily or single? Well, it's multi, well, the zoning's multifamily because they don't have, but 90, uh, over 90% of the residents are single, are uh, uh, widows, divorced, uh, whatever. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is anyone else here to speak for item number seven? Anyone to speak against? Move on to number eight. Number eight is 5400 Hamilton Boulevard. It is a planned unit development and subdivision. It is recommended for a holdover to. Mr. Chairman, if I may. The applicant has submitted the needed rezoning application, so the staff would recommend that this be held over until the March 3rd meeting so that all applications can be considered concurrently. Very good. Is the applicant in agreement? Yes. Okay. This will more than likely be held over if there's anyone here to speak for you may speak now or you may wait until March the 3rd 
Is there anyone here to speak against? Okay. That concludes the public hearing portion of our meeting. We will now begin the deliberation session. If I may, Mr. Chairman, this air conditioner out here is really loud and it's hard for us out here to hear y'all. So please, when you have something to say, get close to your microphone. I was just really hard to hear. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll now open the deliberation session. Uh, item number one is to Drury Lane. It is recommended for approval. Do I have a motion? Motion to, to approve. Go ahead, Jennifer. Motion to approve subject to staff recommendation. Second. Motion to approve and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item number two. 2351 Venetia Road. Number two is recommended for approval by the staff, subject to nine conditions. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Item number three, 3011 Demetropolis Road. Staff recommended for approval, subject to seven conditions. Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion to approve and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Item number four is 7259 Wingate Way. Wingate is staff recommends approval subject to 11 conditions. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion to approve and second. One question. All in favor? One question. I'm sorry. So if, if they change the site plan, they've got to come back to the Planning Commission, correct? That's correct. Any modifications other than maybe shifting a lot line due to topo or whatever, but if they propose a connection, increase the number of lots, et cetera, that will have to come back to the commission. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Item number five is northeast corner of Halls Mill Road and River Duchesne Road. Zoning change from B3 to I1. Staff recommends approval, subject to two conditions. So moved. Can we add the other conditions that were? I'm sorry. Yeah, we need to get a second first. Need a second. 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 I, have a question. I have a question real quick, too. The provision of the so do we have it? Do we have a second? <laughs> second. Yeah, okay, cool. Second. Sorry. <laughs> I got, got ahead of the second. <laughs> Do we have a motion Longer. and a second? Yes. <laughs> All in favor? No, 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 no. We got discussion. My quick question is regarding the sidewalk waiver. Um, are we able to vote on that during no, this? Sir. We have to, that has to be a separate application. That is correct. Okay. Yeah, I, I want to make sure that we get all of the... Um, recommendations that were brought forward into the staff I, I will read those these were proposed by the applicant in addition to the staff recommended conditions and that is an eight foot fence along the east property line that gravel be used for the lay down area and any areas outside of required parking and fire code requirements landscaping to be located along Halls Mill Road and Riviera Duchene rights of way, 
and the X site is limited to access to Hulse Mill Road. I would like to amend my motion to include the conditions as stated by Ms. Pappas. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item number six is a sidewalk waiver request for 1000 Bay Bridge Road. Staff recommends approval. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Opposed. opposed. I'm sorry. We have one. Two, two opposed. We had four or five in favor and two opposed. So motion. So the motion passes. passes. Okay. Number six passes. Number seven is a subdivision and zoning staff a zoning amendment at Pleasant Valley, 3015-3019 um, Pleasant Valley Road. The sub, uh, I guess we'll take these separately. Is that what we do? Okay. On the subdivision is recommended for approval. Do I have a So move. A motion. Second. Subject to staff recommendation. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The subdivision passes. The zoning amendment is also recommended for approval. Do we have any discussion? Move to approve subject to staff recommendations. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Item number eight is 5400 Hamilton Boulevard. Uh, it has rec been recommended for a holdover for March the 3rd. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Holdover passes. Is is there any other business? Just a reminder, we will be back on schedule with um, our meeting on March 3rd and then uh, the public hearing on the UDC. The legal ads began running today. That public hearing is on March 10th. I believe two of our members have a hard copy of it, the UDC at your places. And that's all we have.